Okay. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Okay, everybody. It's nice to see many of you here. So I am presenting the progress of the European Pollen Database, and I'll talk a little bit on the data rescue project that we had here in the Netherlands. My name is Thomas Giesecke, yeah, and you see the European Pollen Database. So um, the European Pollen Database is not just um, the continent of Europe, but uh, we sort of agreed on um, take um, look after um, records as well that come from um, Asia, but north of China. Um, there are more uh, data sets in, in Russia that come from an earlier um, project of the Russian uh, Near East or Far East. Um, and, and we will slowly look over those data sets as well, but these are not included here. So this is just a map of sites that are um, dedicated EPD. Um, you also see that um, EPD contains some of the sites that are in Northern Africa. Um, we are very happy to um, move those over to the African pollen database if, uh, if they like to have them. Um, otherwise, for the time being, we look after them as well. Let's, let's zoom into Europe proper. Um, so the European pollen database as such, and here we just, uh, just took the numbers that uh, Simon provided for the fossil pollen data, so not the surface sample data sets. And we have um, 2,581 sites um, as of the recording of, of Simon. Um, there are new sites coming up all the time. Over the last year, there were 471 sites added. Um, many of those are, are actually from the Netherlands, which you see here. So with all that many fossil sites, um, I believe the European Pollen Database is the largest constituent database um, in Neotoma in terms of fossil sites. And most of the um, modern sites are not yet in Neotoma, no modern sites from Europe. Um, we also seem to be one of the largest in terms of uh, taxonomic names, and that is not uh, because we have so many pollen taxa in Europe, but we have so many different schools and pollen analysts. And uh, so these have created a headache um, and these number um, of the added taxa in the last year is creating um, another headache for me because I wasn't aware of these. And uh, this is probably due to uh, many non-pollen polynomials, but potentially also uh, to a system in the database because when you move the, uh, from the SQL to the PostgreSQL server, many of the taxa disappeared and uh, had to be um, sort of put in um, again. So I just mentioned the Netherlands and uh, what we're doing here, we got a little bit of money from the faculty uh, to employ um, a person and a few students over the period of two years. And um, we, we are looking at, getting all these uh, dispersed data from the Netherlands, and there is a lot of it um, into some sort of public domain. Uh, the initiative had started earlier, but it was always difficult to sort of find money for a person to, to get these together. And when there was a call available, uh, we jumped at it and we got the money. And so um, it was mainly Iris de Wolf that put together all these data sets that we are seeing here on this overview map. Um, what I have to say is the Netherlands is not blessed by uh, many beautiful lakes. And so what has been done here was often work on peat sections. Um, much of it was work from the geological survey and from work of the sort of soil mapping because many of the soils are peaty. Um, so you get good pollen preservation in these peaty soils. And, and so there is a very large number of, um, of data um, to have from the Netherlands. It's not, it's often not um, the perfect data set that you want to look for. And when sort of running this project, uh, we didn't really put limits and not by design, but sort of more by, by process, um, also included data sets that are uh, were produced already um, almost 100 years ago in the 1940s. So here you see the number of taxa, and these are not just pollen taxa, uh, but all taxa um, included in these different data sets. 
And you see that as the taxonomy improved in the 1950s and 60s, uh, the number of pollen taxa also increased in these data sets. So this is a caveat um, on this data collection. And it means that when you sort of do these beautiful global summaries, uh, you probably have to be nitpicking out of these many data sets that are now, now available for, uh, for the Netherlands. But uh, problem here is that also many of these sites have actually disappeared. So the data that was collected in the 1940s or 50s is still in many cases the, the only data that is available because the peatland have uh, the peatlands have disappeared. And so nobody can go again and sort of take another call from the side and uh, produce a better uh, resolution um, diagram. So therefore I think it's important data that was collected here. If I go back one slide, you also see um, that it's not just um, policy and pollen data, um, but there's also lots of um, interglacial data because the Netherlands are these, um, these big delta and um, so the EMIAN actually was defined in the Netherlands and also earlier interglacial periods are very well represented um, in the Netherlands and they have come now online and are publicly available. There is still work to be done with these and we hope to get money for a follow-up project to actually work with these data sets. Coming back to the EPD, um, so if you just look under pollen or under constituent database type EPD and the data that Simon provided for us, um, you see that the EPD as a pollen database, or starting off as the European Pollen Database, now contains uh, many different data types. So, of course, there's charcoal in there. There's also one diatom data set in there. There's geochemistry there, XRF is there, plant macrofossils are there, and even two ostracal data sets. So, we will realize that, um, or you, you probably have seen in earlier presentations, that Europe was rather empty um, in terms of of vertebrate data, diatom data. That doesn't mean that these data types haven't been collected in Europe, but um, there has, hasn't been a community um, that had created a database or uh, communities with such databases. Um, they sort of never really um, got online and it was easy to, to sort of encourage them to come into Neotoma. And this is a process that we're starting now. So last year we had one of our um, open meetings that was the third um, open European pollen database meeting was attended by 112 people. Um, there are, these meetings are intended to bridge the gap between uh, data users and, and data producers. And in last year's meetings, meeting we reached out to um, different proxy communities um, and had uh, very good, interesting uh, keynote talks from um, experts on different data types um, that could be or are already in Neotoma. And we are now trying to follow these paths and trying to bring all these other communities into Neotoma and hopefully they'll um, create their own constituent databases else we feel obliged to look a little bit after um, the other data because we do want to have this richness of data in Neotoma also for the European continent. So Walter Finzinger spearheaded um, um, a small uh, grant proposal to INCRA. We got 5,000 euros with which we just held the first uh, workshop to start this process. Um, there were people from many different European countries um, present live and uh, much more interest uh, was available. So I think we can uh, make these, these big and we had expertise from many different proxy types. So the next step in this process is uh, to write uh, a cost application. Um, cost is a, a European um, funding that um, just funds workshops and meetings. So you can just bring people together. And I think this is ideal for us because we can bring, try to bring all these different European communities together, um, teach them and, and explore what can be done with this data and teach them also to, to upload the data to Neotoma and then create Neotoma um, also on the European continent as a sort of multi-proxy database um, serving the continent. The other sort of things to do is, um, is the European modern pollen database. 
um, that was an initiative by Basil Davis, who um, sent emails to many uh, European or Eurasian workers and asked them for uh, modern surface sample data. And, and he um, had a lot of response. And so there was a, a first and even a second version of it. But all that data is uh, currently not part of, um, of Neotoma or not even of the old EPD proper um, that uh, was on a server in, in southern France. So this is, is something to do. There is no intention to leave this database alone, um, but we want to bring it into, the, uh, into Neotoma. That, that is a major effort um, that we haven't started tackling yet. The needs and wants, um, I think we have several needs. One need that was mentioned already several times is sort of repairing all of Telia's um, steward functionalities as they were, sort of the link to the Google Maps so you could check that the site is actually sitting in a lake, if, if it is a lake site or where that the coordinates are right for the peat bog where it comes from, um, as well as other functionalities that, that once were working in Neotoma, uh, in Telia, when Telia was uh, connected to the old SQL database. Um, we also need, I think, a more stable running of Neotoma. It was just recently that I was uh, teaching an exercise uh, with students and the Neo and Neotoma was down and I had to sort of do other things and, uh, and go to Pangea instead. Um, I think Neotoma is maturing. Um, to the extent that many people are using it and students are using it um, and we should we should have a, a stable running version so it's it's a bit embarrassing if it sort of comes down in the middle of a teaching project. Um, as an EPD I believe we need more control of the data in Neotoma um, and that is um, partly addressing ourselves to sort of find ways of, of better working with it um, I think um, the, the downloadable PostgreSQL versions are a, a good start for us and, uh, and Michelle, our um, uh, technician employed, um, is, is starting to work on that and, and trying to explore these downloadable versions. But I think also we could um, sort of maybe share a bit of responsibilities with, with Simon Goring and sort of looking other, after the data sets and maybe these these, sometimes these bottlenecks of deleting a data set that has been wrongly uploaded, um, potentially these sort of tasks could be also shifted over and, and someone on the European continent could maybe do some of it. Um, also the embargo manager, of course, was, uh, was mentioned earlier. Um, the EPD traditionally has uh, embargoed data. Uh, we're trying to enforce um, the rules and regulations that we uh, sort of adopted um, from, from the rules and regulations of, um, of Neotoma, um, which allows data sets to be embargoed for several years until publication or, or otherwise, um, and to, to really reinforce these and, and use these cap capability, well, of course, we need the embargo manager as well. The bulk uploader is a long dream, and yes, if we now get maybe some of the other communities online, then um, this would uh, greatly facilitate um, the upload of these data sets. So the more once, um, it would be nice to implement the EPD taxon harmonization um, into Neotoma. Um, we have developed that on, offline, that is available offline, um, but it would be nice to really make this part of Neotoma to really uh, facilitate um, these larger um, analysis um, directly sort of pulling it down into R and working with it. It will also be good if we could find a way in the future to actually link um, the taxonomic identifications um, with pictures that are somewhere on a web page or on a catalog or something. And this is particularly an issue for, for the, the NPPs, so the non polar polynomials, um, of which many European people um, have sort of taken to and um, they're probably many synonyms. People have started with, with types and uh, different laboratories are naming the types in a different way. And in order to get some grips on um, the sort of harmonizing that type taxonomy, particularly if people upload new data, it would actually be helpful um, if, and that is not on a Neotoma level, but on the Telia level, when you put the data in the Telia spreadsheet to actually check um, what thing that is that was identified there. And it would need to be something that works with the user. 
so at the time of sort of putting data in and making a diagram. And it would be nice because Europe is, um, is a, a continent with an old history and much of the information was uh, gathered in an, an archaeological context. And I'm not sure, I haven't really explored it yet, but I believe that the archaeobotanical databases that exist in, in Europe, um, they have many different metadata types that uh, Neotoma currently does not cater for. And here this would also be sort of on the, on the wish list uh, to maybe explore how Neotoma can be expanded and in order to also take, uh, take these data, data types. And that is my presentation. Thank you very much. And I need to